Methodist Church. We are so excited you are here. If you are a visitor, please check out our welcome tent right over there. We've got you some special stuff to take home with you. And please don't forget, we have Braden's Barbecue after this. So I know everyone's excited about that, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, very good. We are excited. So this is going to be all five of our services getting to be together to celebrate Pentecost and celebrate the wonderful time that we have had together as a church and a community. And so we are just so excited about today. And this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Start a fire in my soul Fan the flame and make it grow So there's no doubt or denying And let it burn so brightly That everyone around can see That it's you, that it's you that we need Start a fire in me Feels like we're in the dead weather, waiting on something better. But am I really gonna hide forever? Over and over again, I hear your voice in my head. Let your light shine, let your light shine for all to see. Start a fire in my soul, fan the flame and make it grow. So there's no doubt or denial. Let it burn so brightly that everyone around can see that it's you, that it's you that we need. Start a fire in me. You only need a spark to start a whole blaze. It only takes a little thing. Let us start right here in this city So these old walls will never be the same Over and over again I hear your voice in my head They need to know, I need to go Spirit, won't you fall on my heart now Start a fire in my soul Fan the flame and make it grow So there's no doubt or denying so brightly that everyone around can see that it's you, that it's you that we need. Start a fire in me. You are the fire, you are the flame, you are the light on the darkest day. We are the hope, we bear your name, we carry the news that you have come to say. grow so there's no doubt or denying let it burn so brightly that everyone around can see that it's you that it's you that we need start a fire you are the fire you are the flame you are the light on the darkest day Start a fire in me I'm glad you're here. Yes, indeed, we are glad you're all here for our annual Meet at the Market celebration. We hope today's a blast for you. Don't forget, there's lunch following our service and many other fun things to do. We're so excited to have all of you here for worship today. All of us in the same room at the same time with the praise band, the sanctuary choir, and the orchestra. There's bound to be something that will really touch your heart. We just invite you to, to jump right in, to sing your heart out, and to uh, enjoy this worship experience where we can all be in the same room at the same time. And don't forget, there are carousel rides at the end. Summer here at First Broad Street is full of fun for people of all ages, and one of our great events is right around the corner. Starting tomorrow is our VBS program. If you haven't signed up, there's still room. Hope to see you tomorrow for this great week of fun for our children's ministry. Also, following that in just a couple weeks is FBS week at our local church camp, Camp Bays Mountain. There's still time to sign up for that as well. Hope to see you there. 
Hey friends, the season of travel is upon us and we want to remind you that your gifts are vital to us being able to continue uh, the ministries of First Broad Street seamlessly. So we also wanted to remind you of all the ways that you can give that we've set up that are convenient for you. You can of course show up and put your offering in the offering plate. You can also give online at fbsumc.org. You can also text to gift or we can set up a, an automatic deduction right out of your bank account. Just check with our finance office and we'll be able to help you out. For more about what's happening here at First Broad Street, you can check out our Instagram, our Facebook page, or our website, fbsumc.org. And thank you for being here. Have a great day and a great week. Have a good day and have a good week. You got it, dude. Wow, what a tough act to follow. <laughs> we come now to our prayer time, and, and as we do, we want to remember those who are in the hospital, Jean Hands and Betty Isley. We also extend Christian sympathy to Irene Belk on the death of her husband. We celebrate the birth of Lily Collette Herr, daughter of Derek and Beth Herr, and the granddaughter of Crandall and Jody Kraft. We also ask that you remember those clergy and laity who are going to annual conference starting this afternoon, and there will be important decisions made throughout the week, and we just ask that you would hold that whole process in your prayer. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we are able to come to you today and for our church to be all together in this place. We thank you, dear God, that you are here and dwelling among us. We pray, dear Lord, for those who are sick, who need healing. We also ask that you would sit with and bring peace and comfort to those who are in grief. Dear Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world on this Pentecost Sunday as we are so vividly reminded that your gospel is for every person, no matter what language they speak. We invite the Holy Spirit to be present with us now, dear God. We ask that the Holy Spirit would be with those at annual conference this week. We thank you, dear God, that the Holy Spirit is available to us to be our comforter and our advocate. Dear Lord, we pray that you would bring forgiveness for the places where we have simply made wrong choices and we have not followed your path for our lives or for our church. We come to you in repentance and ask for your forgiveness. We rejoice that you are merciful and ever grace, grateful, graceful in extending your love to us. Dear Lord, we pray that you would just continue to bless us as we're gathered here and give us that joy of knowing that you love us all. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, as our continued part of our worship, we are joyfully bringing together our tithes and our offerings, and we would ask that you would do so as the basket comes by if you would like to participate. Show 
have a lot of talent in this church, don't we? That's pretty amazing. This is something that we do every week. We get to hear music from all places and all things. But now let us pray over our tithe and our offering together. Father God, you have given us great gifts of talent and music, of joy and love, great adventure and service in your name. And we ask your blessing on our tithe and our offering, both what can fit in a basket and, Lord, what we could never contain, even in our earthly bodies. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, as you heard, tomorrow starts VBS, and so we have a very special video to show you in just a second. And as soon as that video is over, and even as the video is playing, I'm going to invite all of our students and any of our people who will be volunteering as part of VBS to come forward to the center here, and we will pray over you to commission you for VBS. So as this video is playing, if you guys want to come on up to the front, you can. We'll invite the kids to come on up, and the orchestra has a special music just for them. This is a great turnout, isn't it? And this isn't even everybody. So I know there's a lot more people involved in VBS. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to pray for all of you. And then we want you to also pray for Miss Katie and Miss Brandy too. Can we do that together? Okay, let's pray first for you guys. Dear Lord, we just ask for these wonderful, wonderful children to have an amazing time at VBS. Lord, that your spirit will truly pour out over them. They will feel the love of this church, but most importantly, your love for them. And Lord, we ask your special blessing on all the volunteers, all the people who are pouring their time into these amazing kids, and we know that your love will shine through them. Lord, we ask that you keep it stress-free and tons of fun. And Lord, we again lift up Miss Katie and Miss Brandy. Father, we know how hard they work for these kids and how much they love them and just the amazing job they've done. Father, we thank you for the blessing that is our children, and may we honor what you have given us in bringing them to us. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you guys ready to roar? Okay, roar. Good job. Okay, you all may be seated.
Well, I was told this is going to be a big day. Wow. And 
don't we already feel the Spirit's presence among us here? Before we, um, yeah. Before we uh, get into the Word, a couple of weeks ago we commissioned about a hundred young people and adults on their mission trip to Johns Island. They got back last night. Uh, with those of you who were part of the Johns Island trip, if you're here, would you stand up for just a moment? If you would, remain standing, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the week that uh, this team has had in Johns Island, for their witness through all of their labors, through the way they faced adversity and yet stayed focused on your call. We thank you, O oh God, that they went to represent you as well as this church. And we, we give you thanks that they have returned home safely. May the fruits of their efforts continue to grow. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, it's Pentecost Sunday. So where else should we turn in the Bible but to the second chapter of the book of Acts? Hear these words. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, just like us. And suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were, stay they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who were speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, ah, oh, they had too much wine. And and this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, would you take the hand of the person who's seated closest to you, and let's join together in prayer. Oh God, we are so grateful for this day. For the wonder of your Holy Spirit among us. For this gathering from from different services of our church as one body in Christ. Now as we open the word, help us to hear once more your truth for our lives. Speak, O oh Lord. We, your servants, are listening. Amen. It was a night that Vicki and I will, will never forget. April the 26th, 2011. On that day, the largest outbreak of tornadoes to, to, at that time to ever hit the southern part of the United States struck. It left catastrophic damage in Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, and even into Virginia. I was the district superintendent in Johnson City at the time and I remember late in the afternoon, we were under a uh, tornado watch. And early in the evening, that watch became a tornado warning. Vicki and I gathered the dogs and the cat and spent the next two and a half hours in the basement. When it was over, 
A number of my churches in Greene County had received damage. One lost its roof, its entire front porch. Even worse, three members of that church living in houses right near it had been killed by the storm. That day, 346 people across the south died in that mighty rushing wind. I mentioned that night because of the fact that our text opens with with those very same words, the sound of a mighty rushing wind. But unlike that terrible night in April of 2011, the wind of which we speak today is not a destructive force, a power. In fact, it is a holy, life-giving, life-transforming presence and power. I mention that also because the word, as you know, in Greek and in Hebrew for wind is also the word for spirit. And on this Pentecost Sunday, that's what we want to focus on, the coming of God's spirit into our hearts and minds. Remember, Jesus had, had, told his, had given his final instructions to the disciples in Acts 1, and he had told them that they would receive power from on high. He had told them to go and wait in Jerusalem. And as they were waiting and as they were praying, that mighty rushing wind came upon them. And their lives and our world would never be the same. As we continue this series on becoming a passionate church, it is to this story, this moment in the life of the church to which we want to turn our attention because I'm convinced that throughout Acts 2, we do see the church as it was meant to be, the church at its absolute very best. The church where God's spirit is present and active. A church where lives are being changed, where a new community is being created, where God's vision is being fulfilled, where God's people are being equipped to go out and to share with others the good news of God's love in Christ Jesus. And I hope today that we haven't gathered here just to celebrate a a wonderful event called Meet at the Market. I hope today that we have all gathered in this place with the expectation and the desire, the anticipation that we too are going to feel the rush of a mighty wind filling our hearts and minds and souls all over again so that First Broad Street United Methodist Church might be a clearer reflection of the church of Acts 2. Let's think about it for just a few moments. We need that rush of the mighty wind of God's Spirit because it is God's Spirit who ultimately overcomes the barriers that separate us from God. I remember this story of of an incident that took place in in New Jersey back in 1932, back in the days of the uh, the dirigibles that uh, at one port there in New Jersey, there were a number of men with ropes getting ready to affix a dirigible when all of a sudden there was a wind that came in and it raised the nose of that balloon. Well, most of the folk had enough good sense to let go, but some people panicked and they grabbed hold of the rope as the nose went higher and higher and higher. Now, all but one of them failed to hold on. And the ones that fell received serious injuries upon impact. But there was one guy who held on to the rope of that ever-rising nose of the dirigible for 45 minutes until they could get him down. 
When they got him down, they were amazed at his strength and asked him, how on earth did you hold on for so long? And he said, I didn't hold on. I tied the rope around my waist and it held on to me. <laughs> well, Pentecost is when God comes and takes hold of us. When God's Spirit floods our hearts, our minds, and our souls to end the separation that our sinfulness has created. And indeed, in the Old Testament, there is a clear sense that sin separates us from our Creator. It is evident there that day when, when uh, Moses examined that bush and the first thing God said was, take off your sandals. The sandals were, were symbolic of the dirtiness of our lives. Take those sandals off because you're standing on holy ground. That separation is evident at Sinai when the people are told, you can't go up on the slopes, you've got to stay here, for it's a holy mountain. Even when they fashioned the tabernacle and later built the temple, Throughout the confines of each, there were these barriers that said to children and women, that said to the men, that even said to the priest, this is as close to God as you can possibly come. Because of our inability to love as we ought to love, because of our self-centeredness, because of the ways in which we fail to live up to God's standards, there's always a separation. But God ended the separation at Pentecost when he sent his Holy Spirit to dwell within us, to take hold of us, that he might mold and fashion each of us into the image of his Son. The second thing I would say is we need that fresh wind of God's Spirit to remove the barriers, those things that keep us from being the person that we know God wants us to be. We didn't read about it here, but in Acts 2, Peter stands up before the multitudes and he begins to proclaim the gospel. Now just think about it for a moment. This guy who stands up and so boldly and effectively preaches the good news is the same Peter who only a few weeks before had denied Je knowing Jesus in front of a slave girl by the fireside. It's the same person, but it sure isn't the same man. There's something that has changed within Peter. Something that's giving him boldness and a conviction and a courage that he had never known before. And it wasn't something he conjured up in himself. It was something that began to fill his heart and soul with that mighty rushing wind. Now those of you that have been in my Bible studies know that I've been saying this for 25 years. I come back, I'm still saying it. That might be a sign that I haven't grown or it might be a sign that I'm absolutely convinced of it. But the most formative words in all of the Old Testament are words that are found in Leviticus 19. You shall be a holy people, for I, the Lord your God, am a holy God. Now I got to tell you, as much as I believe those words, there are times when I read them and I think to myself, I got no hope. Because no matter how hard I try, no matter how diligently I desire it, no matter how much I want to be a holy person, what life has taught me is that I can't make myself holy. Because I can do all the right things, but deep inside, it's the same old me. It is God's Spirit who comes into our lives to sanctify and make holy 
God's instruments, God's vessels, God's people. It is the Holy Spirit at work within us that produces the love of Jesus in our hearts and the image of Jesus in all that we think, do, and say. And so I want to say as clearly as I possibly can this morning, If you've tried to be a holy person and you just can't do it, if you've told yourself, I want to be a better person, but you wind up at the end of the day thinking it's the same old me, take heart, there is hope. Because Pentecost is the reminder that God's Spirit has come to do within us what we could never do. So if you want to be a better spouse or a better parent, you can be by the indwelling presence and work of God's Holy Spirit. If you want to be more loving, more accepting, more patient, more attentive to the needs of others, you can be by the indwelling presence and the work of the Holy Spirit. If you want to finally break the bad habits that are dragging you down, you can by the indwelling presence and work of God's Holy Spirit. If you want to be more forgiving, if you want to finally let go of those past hurts and resentments that keep on popping up, you can today by the indwelling presence and work of God's Holy Spirit. If you want to be a more faithful follower of Jesus in all things, friends, take heart, you can. By the indwelling presence and the work of God's holy people. The question is, will we open our hearts and the deepest places of our souls that God's indwelling presence may continue to transform and make each of us into a new man or woman in the image of our Lord. We need that fresh wind of the Holy Spirit to blow away those barriers that separate people from one another. You know that Jesus understood the greatest threat to the church was not the resistant Jewish population. It would not be the Roman Empire or any empire. The greatest threat to the church would always be within. Because wherever people are gathered, there's always going to be differences of opinion. There will always be those times when either intentionally or or unintentionally we harm others, hurt others, disappoint one another, and divisions and rifts can grow. That's why in his priestly prayer of John 17, Jesus prays for the church that they may be one. And that's why Jesus said to his disciples that the world will know that you are my disciples by this, that you love one another. I'm convinced that Jesus emphasized that not only with his words, but but certainly with with the things that he did. Because I'm convinced that that was in part an impetus For Jesus that night when he took the basin and the bowl and knelt down and washed feet. It was Jesus' way of showing the disciples in a family. We're willing to bow down. We're willing to to do the dirty work. To make sure that others are more comfortable. We're willing to serve even before we are asked. And I'm convinced that that's in part why Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan because as the people of God, we're willing to take risk, the risk of getting involved, 
the risk of reaching out to people who are not like us and sometimes to people who don't like us, that we're willing to do whatever we need, whatever is required to meet the needs of those around us. And I'm convinced that that's part of the reason why Jesus welcomed the little children. To show us in absolutely no unmistakable terms that in God's family, there is a place for all. Even the least and the lowest and the last. That all are valued in God's heart. And the most, the most loving and redemptive thing we can do is have hearts that are willing to reach out and draw in to love and to nurture people in faith. What we see in Acts 2 is that God's Spirit certainly broke down the barriers. As you heard read, there were, there were people that spoke many different languages. There were people gathered there that listened to Peter that came from all parts of the known world. You had the wealthy. You had the very poor. You had the highly educated. You had the ignorant. But that day, as God's spirit fell upon them, all of them found their place. All of them found uh, a, a, a common ground. All of them discovered the wonder of being part of one family of faith. And you see the direct results of it at the end of the chapter. Because at the end of the chapter, these people who had come from many different places and speak many different languages, they're all together. They're getting together every day. They're eating together. They're sharing what they have to meet needs. They're worshiping together. They're praying together. And the greatest thing of all is that they found favor with all people. God's love broke down the barriers that divide. And then finally, I would say that we need this fresh wind of the Spirit to break down the barriers that separate the church from the world. In the Old Testament, one of God's favorite words to his people is simply the word go. That's the word he spoke to Abraham. That's the word that, that he would later speak to Moses. And on the banks of the, of the Jordan, the word he'd speak to, uh, to Joshua. But you see God telling his people, go forth, go on, go in. And of course, Jesus' last instructions to the disciples was go. Go and make disciples. Go and share the good news. Go and tell the story of God's redeeming love. And my friends, that was exactly what they did. They didn't stay in Jerusalem. They didn't limit themselves to the familiarity of Judea. No, they dared to go into Samaria where former enemies became brothers and sisters in Christ. They dared to go into Asia Minor and declare the good news. They dared to go even to Rome itself. And preach the, the hope that is found in Christ Jesus. And wherever they dared to go, just like on the day of Pentecost, there were those who heard and believed and came to a new life in Christ and a new church was established. Now I mention this final word of going because while I think this is wonderful, having us all together. The fact of them and, and the fact that we're out here in the middle of downtown Kingsport and we've opened the side door so that folk can see us and we got a free meal for anybody who wants it. I think that's wonderful. 
But we can't limit going to just a few blocks down the road from the sanctuary or the fellowship hall. If we're going to be the church that's depicted in Acts 2, we've got to have a new commitment, a new empowerment to go beyond the comfortable places, to go in ways that take the gospel we're proclaiming to those who've never heard, to those who aren't sure if they would belong at our church, to those who aren't sure if they fit in with the people at First Broad Street. We've got to be willing to break down whatever barrier there is, physical, mental, spiritual barrier, to go where there are the least, the last, and the lost, to go as long as there are hurting folk, disillusioned folk, folk feeling isolated from others and from life itself. On this Pentecost Sunday, we need that fresh wind of God's Spirit to fill our souls, to stir our hearts, to equip us to go out and be the hands and the feet of Jesus in everything that we do. I want to close with these words by um, Rick Kirchhoff, that he spoke to a group of Methodists in Memphis on a Pentecost Sunday a number of years ago. He writes... When God sends forth his spirit, amazing things happen. Love abounds. Barriers are broken. Communities are formed. uh, Opposites are reconciled. Unity is established. Addiction is broken. Cities are renewed. Races are reconciled. Hope is established. People are blessed. And the church is alive. But here's what I like. He goes on to say, today, God is doing something. So discouraged folk, cheer up. Dishonest folk, fess up. Sour folk, sweeten up. Closed folk, open up. Conflicted folk, make up. Sleeping folk, wake up. Lukewarm folk, fire up. Dry bones, shake up. Church. Stand up, for today God's Spirit has come and Christ the Savior is lifted up. My friends, when we see that happen in here, we're going to truly be a passionate church. Come, Holy Spirit, take away the barriers. Send us forth. Amen. Thank you, Randy. That's so inspiring and so powerful. Uh, Just to add to this powerful moment of inspiration, we're actually going to watch a video celebrating what God has done for us over the past year. As we watch it, may we feel God stirring our hearts to say that we can continue on this path and have a bigger vision for our worship, for our growth, and for our reaching out efforts. Please enjoy watching this together.
what you've seen is possible because of your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. This makes you the hands and feet of Jesus. As we go forward, know that no matter who you are, you're welcome at First Broad Street. You belong here. Just
We are going to let our Baysmont folk, um, after the benediction, our Baysmont folk and visitors will be able to go through the, the meal lines first. And then we ask that you allow people with limited mobility or young children to go through right after them. And then everybody else can go through for the food. And you're just going to go through on one side on two different lines and be served. And there'll be desserts on the next table over and waters on the table after that. And so just be sure that we allow our Basemont folk to go through first. And then when, with our kids and anyone else who wants to, the carousel will be open for free rides. And also the playground, although it's a little damp. So I'm going to let Randy go ahead now. Okay. Um, we got just a little bit of a surprise. One of the great things with which we've been blessed this year was the appointment of Misty Belote as one of our part-time pastors on this staff. Wasn't that great? And um, because she's serving under appointment, she already received her license to preach. However, on Wednesday at the closing service of annual conference, she will, be, uh, she will actually be commissioned as a local pastor here. So... Let's have a moment and a word of prayer for Missy. Father, we thank you for all the gifts you bring, but especially today for, for opening the door that enabled Missy to become part of our church staff. And we pray that as she goes to conference this week and, and participates in that service of commissioning and licensing, that your spirit would fall afresh on her, that she may go forth, to serve you with those wonderful gifts and talents you have given her. We pray that her ministry among us and beyond will be long and fruitful and that through her, others will come to know that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for her presence, for this team you've put together. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Yeah. And now... Let's, uh, we're going to have a blessing and a benediction, so bow with me again. Father, we thank you for a wonderful day and for the food that has been prepared. As we sit around and share this meal, may the bonds of our fellowship grow ever deeper, that we may go forth in the, in the love that you have revealed to us in Christ Jesus and in the power of your Holy Spirit within to make the journey and to invite others to make it with us, the journey of eternal and abundant life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. flame and make it grow so there's no doubt for tonight and let it burn so brightly that everyone around can see that it's you that it's you that we need start a fire Yeah. 
Yeah. 